just want to, for those of you who are not familiar with Amadeus, I'll spend uh, a few minutes on what Amadeus is all about. Uh, and then I'll go through more specifically Amadeus Ventures, which I'm sure uh, you're much more interested in. And uh, I also want to fold in a, a few um, thoughts uh, from some of the comments I heard this morning. Uh, they aren't necessarily bullets on my slides, but I thought it would be worth mentioning uh, just my reaction to a few of the questions, a few of the comments that a few guys made uh, during the morning session as well as some things we've been discussing over, over the coffee. So I'm Kathy Grass, I'm Head of Innovation and Ventures at Amadeus. Uh, Amadeus is a global uh, company dedicated to the travel industry. Um, we are uh, present in, as you see here, over uh, 190 countries worldwide. And having that global network, having that global reach is one of our biggest assets. So we talked about this morning the importance of a network. Uh, we have absolutely mastered that and have uh, a network and global presence in more countries than I think any other uh, global corporation. I think that there's two com countries in the world we don't do business, North Korea um, and someone similar to North Korea, which I cannot remember at the, more, at the moment. So um, our solutions are aimed at providing business performance and we have a multitude of, of customers, whether that be airlines, travel agencies, both online and offline. Offline, maybe none of you guys have ever used or aware of, but brick and mortar travel agencies are out there and um, are a strong part of our business. Airports, hotels, railways, ferries, insurance, uh, and, and, and. We have uh, a large reach throughout that network. Uh, we have a transactional-based business model. So we, we talked about business models a little bit this morning. Our bread and butter is off a transactional-based business model. That's not to say we're not interested in, in new forms uh, of revenues through other business models, but we've made this very successful. Here's a few numbers uh, for you just to get your head around. 1.6 billion transactions a, a year. So anytime you look, sorry, a day from last year, sorry, these are averages from 2013. So anytime you look uh, for flight, uh, anytime you look for a hotel, just looking, you know, we consider transactions based on what we look, not necessarily what we look, uh, and our business model uh, uh, charges for, for looks uh, as well as books. So uh, it's, a, it's a good model to have. Uh, that also means we take care of bookings. So availability, pricing, uh, bookings, and uh, issuing uh, those tickets. We also have a IT solution for airlines and, and, and other travel providers like hotels. So we are managing the reservation, the inventory, the departure control systems of over 120 airlines uh, globally and making sure that all those logistics and the systems behind the logistics are working for the time you board an aircraft. We charge uh, those IT solutions based on passengers actually boarded on that airplane rather than a uh, license fee or a subscription fee. We actually charge per passenger uh, that passes through that system for that airline. Uh, and um, as I mentioned before, a, a big network. So we are at the crossroads and we are actually looking to <coughs> connect all of these uh, players within the travel ecosystem. You can see there are some of the, the customer segments that, that I mentioned earlier. We're at that crossroads, not only servicing those different segments, but also helping the interaction points between other different segments. And we support our customers uh, and our customers' customers, uh, the, the travelers, making sure that that whole life cycle is also supported. So when you travel, you're inspired to go somewhere, you actually need to search for that information, you buy it, uh, and, and then you start your journey. So we have solutions along that customer experience, along that journey path as well. So, okay. Clear purpose, uh, we want to shape the future of travel. Uh, we consider ourselves a very innovative company, but innovation also means change, and that's one reason why I'm here today, and one reason why we have uh, Amadeus Ventures. Uh, and uh, we want to be that innovative company shaping the future of travel, but we realize that we cannot do that alone. I think we've been very successful in shaping the future of travel, and we've, <coughs> we've been a good benchmark for innovation within the travel industry. The times are changing, and we see, like many corporates and many different industries, that to continue to deliver innovative solutions, 
that cannot rely on your own uh, employees, on your own R&D, on your own ideas. You really need to be looking outside for, for new ideas, new ways of doing things, and working with different networks of people. So let me talk about Amadeus Ventures and what it's all about, and also give you guys time um, to ask questions as well. So we started Amadeus Ventures last year. It's a, it's a venture fund to make minority stake investments in early stage companies uh, and early stage companies with ideas that can be applied to the travel sector. So they either need to be in the travel domain or potentially uh, a solution that can be applied to a travel vertical. Uh, a lot of search capabilities, maybe database solutions that um, are servicing multiple industries but at least can be applied to <laughs> vertical of travel, for example. Why did we start the fund? Um, one is you can see that the, the travel industry is very healthy. You see big growth numbers, both in, um, both in what is expected to uh, happen out there in, in terms of dollars within travel and tourism. You also see big numbers of, of travelers, whether that be air, whether you see that on different types of consumption at destination. Pretty much any travel metric you look at is growing. So it's a great industry to be in. But again, we can't do it alone. So um, when we set up the fund last year, we talked about a lot of different reasons of why we wanted to do this. And, and the main reason we talked about um, at the company wasn't the last bullet point of making money, though obviously it's a fund and so we need to make money. But the focus and the discussion that we had at Amadeus was much more on the top of uh, bullet points. Times are changing, innovation challenge. Um, most corporations are feeling this. Gone are the days where a corporation would support their own labs, um, expect all new ideas to come from their employees, from their R&D facilities, that they would expect to take an idea, incubate that idea, and, um, and, uh, and get it out in the market. Why? Uh, I think one reason we talked about, or one reason, and I heard this morning, it was about barriers to entry. Barriers to entry are much lower now, and much quicker. <laughs> so it's very hard for a corporate, so Amadeus has 11,000 employees globally, still actually a relatively small company, but it's a big company. It's hard to react with the same speed that a small team of three or four people can do uh, and um, and actually move from, from idea to prototype to actually commercial viable business. So you need to rely um, on external sources <coughs> of innovation because business models and ideas can be disrupted much more quickly in today's environment than they could um, even seven, uh, six, seven years ago. Okay? Innovation, we mentioned innovation. Uh, it's about being proactive, being out there. Um, my team focuses both on trend watching uh, from an innovation perspective, what is happening, what sort of ecosystems are forming, how, what can we see uh, developing, uh, what do we think will develop, and then how do we capitalize on that idea when being uh, making investments. But it's about uh, also validating those ideas, because even if we think it's a trend, even if we think uh, something is going to happen, we almost don't consider it a real trend until we actually start seeing startups trying to solve this problem. So we watch consumer behavior very closely. What are they doing? What do they say they What do they say they need? But what are they doing to either uh, validate or invalidate that need? But until you can match that need with an actual idea, a product, a service, a solution, um, you can't make money. So we're really looking for those two sides of the equation to match up, and that's why it's so important for us to be out there engaging with folks like yourself. It's about enhancing our capabilities. So um, we're looking for startups in the travel sector, at least that can be applied to the travel sector, and we're a strategic investor. So if, when you guys go out there and pitch, you're going to be pitching to a lot of VCs, they're financial investors, um, but we consider ourselves a strategic. So if you want a corporation at your table, they have slightly different needs, and they have a, it's a slightly different relationship. And we can talk about that relationship and what's important for you guys to realize what a strategic investor is looking at. We're looking for strategic value. So ultimately, it's something that can enhance our portfolio. We want a, an ideal situation is we hand you a check in one hand, and we sign a commercial uh, agreement in the other hand, neither of which inhibiting the other. We don't uh, uh, 
define very stringent commercial terms in our in investment uh, deals and, and venture. And that took a lot of thinking at Amadeus, especially as a strategic investor. It's important that we approach this with a VC mentality. And the way that we talk about it is we like to be um, farmers, not hunters. So um, my M&A colleagues, who I love dearly and have done an amazing job uh, at Amadeus to make some huge and amazing um, uh, acquisitions, uh, they're hunters. They go in and we're buying. So um, for sake of a, a graphic example, they're, they're kind of killing the, the chicken, right? So they're <laughs> killing the chicken and bringing it in. We're integrating it. Though so obviously we want that to be successful. We consider ourselves more farmers, so we want that chicken to keep laying eggs. Um, and uh, we make sure that we help and support that startup. Uh, we're a minority investor, we're co-investing with others, so we want to make sure that that chicken is healthy and happy, it continues to lay eggs, and then maybe a hundred will find it later. Uh, um, it's about diversification, so investing in startups and exploring avenues through startups, it lets us diversify much more than what we can do ourselves. Again, it's not about developing ideas uh, in-house, just because we didn't come up with the idea, it's not good. Uh, and then financial returns, financial financial returns. Uh, it's about the money, and you guys as well, and we realize that. The strategic investor obviously has strategic objectives that they want to achieve as well. Three themes that we're looking at in 2014, um, and we readdress the themes based on our strategic uh, purpose every year. You'll uh, we'll see what they, they are next year. It might be sub-segments of, of this or iterations of this, but this is what we're looking at for this year. Um, content on the long tail. Amadeus is traditionally very much an air company. We have lots of air content. Uh, no other company has more air content we do, and we have some hotel content as well. We're looking for new forms of content, um, I, and we see a lot of niche curated content. That content is very interesting to us, and we heard some of it this morning. Lots of, of niche uh, content providers, both either curated new forms of content um, or IT solutions supporting this new niche curated content. A very um, illustrative example of, of what we see happening here is especially around what we call private lodgings and your Airbnbs, your different marketplaces that are forming. Those are new forms of content. But with such a new and um, disruptive idea like Airbnb, they've also created a lot of opportunities for the businesses to come in. So some of the early challenges of some of these sites were around payment or active uh, active passive content, uh, maybe uh, uh, is that place really bookable? Is that place really available? Uh, how does the payment work? Uh, there's a very long dialogue sometimes in, in how you maybe book that, uh, whether it's available, trying to talk to the owner, etc. And you see I2 Solutions trying to come in and, and, and sell their services to those marketplaces to, to solve those problems and, and to, to meet some of the needs. So we're looking at all of the ecosystems around content, not just the content itself, but it might be the IT solutions to support those marketplaces, to support that content, and or new value-added services um, that start to um, put themselves around those marketplaces. We're also looking at data, and we call it data-led advertising and personalization. So data, uh, and big data is even bigger. Uh, I think a few years ago everyone was talking about big data, but no one quite knew what to do with it yet just trying to figure out how to store it all. And now you see a lot of monetization models happening off the data. So once you have all this data, how do you make money? <laughs> and that's a very good question. And we see probably the first movers in the data space around advertising. So lots of companies with immensely successful business models around um, much more targeted um, um, uh, data, or oh, sorry, targeted advertising, especially in the digital space, how to use that data to do a much more targeted campaign, a very much more targeted ad to retarget uh, a, a user. So they're focusing a lot on that profiling data and, and monetization through its advertising. But we also see, and not maybe as much yet, but it's coming, using that data to 
personalize a solution better, uh, to personalize an experience better, to make it much more relevant, to make it much more contextual, um, and ultimately to get to that right price, right product, right time um, for for user. And, and there's that space is exploding in terms of innovation, but with that explosion, you also see, and they're trying to catch up, you see the technology innovation happening at an equal rate that they're always sort of behind. And, and what I mean there is we have a lot more data, so we, we think we'd be able to personalize and target offerings a lot easier, but then instead of one mobile device, we have two, and then we have the iPad, and then we have our smart TV, and then we have, you know, the kids. And to be able to personalize an experience across device is hugely complicated. Across different platforms is hugely, hugely complicated. And then the consumer expectation grows in that not only do you need it personalized for you person, but within a context that makes sense. Because sometimes I'm on a business trip, sometimes I'm traveling with my husband, sometimes I'm traveling with my children, uh, and or with friends. And so you need to then think about the contextual awareness of that journey of that trip as well. So personalization, though it seems fairly easy and we got a lot of data, it, there's so many factors at play here within that space that that is just, people are just now, I think, trying to figure out what, uh, what they need to even think about to be able to tackle that problem. And then the third, is the trip experience, and all these are correlated and, and overlap in different ways. But we, we think of the trip experience as an end-to-end -end journey, uh, and we're looking at opportunities along that journey. I think we have the search and the booking and that what you do when you're trying to figure out where to go. You know, we, we pretty much have that down, but there's a lot, uh, there's a lot in that space. But what happens at destination? And what, what influences does destination have over um, a full life cycle next time you, you make a trip. What other pain points along that journey exist? Uh, a lot around airport, um, and how, how do all of these almost silo, uh, right now either a silo business unit, Amadeus almost looks at this, unfortunately it's almost silo business units, but how does that need to start to connect and, and interact? So where you're going to Go has a huge influence on the hotel. The hotel should have a huge influence on what other services are at that location. Potentially what you are offered at the airport makes a big difference depending on um, you know, the time you have and where you come from. All these pockets and all these different interaction points need to start interacting and talking and, and leveraging each other um, to make a more holistic journey, a more holistic, pain-free uh, uh, travel experience. So investment criteria, and I'm, I'm going to interject a, a few comments here in terms of things that I heard um, this morning. Um, uh, so this is published on our on our website, and if you go to omadeus.com slash ventures, we'll talk a lot more about the ins and outs of the venture fund. And these are the criteria we published, and so we're quite transparent uh, of what we're looking for and how we filter um, uh, our conversations with startups. So we say uh, we work directly with early stage companies, meaning we direct, we invest directly in you. We do not in invest fund to fund. Um, we make it our investments directly, and you must have at least working prototype. This, for you guys, this is common sense. I think sometimes um, this is it resonates a bit more when we talk about ventures to other corporations or to people in house. Gone are the days that people show up. Well, it's actually not gone are the days, but it should be gone are the days where people actually show up with just a PowerPoint presentation and expect to get money. I mean, it will never happen. <laughs> it will never happen. Um, and you need to have at least a working prototype. A few customers, even better. You better at least have spoken to those customers because the, the, the investors will ask you that. Um, but, uh, and this should be very easy to do. Again, we talked about barriers to entry dropping, um, and so having a prototype means you're serious. If you don't have a prototype, it means you're not serious, okay? Um, now, one thing about, uh, I wanted to mention here, because um, because the barriers to entry are so low, it seems like a lot of the ideas we see are B2C ideas, so really cool apps really cool user experiences, 
That's great. I just wanted to offer up one alternative, because um, Amadeus can consider herself also a B2B to C company. Sometimes, B to C, it's really hard to make money. And sometimes it's really hard to make money with a B to C app where you need to uh, get critical mass. So another alternative is how can you uh, maybe take your idea and sell it B to B, sell it to other companies uh, and focus your solutions uh, on those. And we see um, some companies start out trying to be B to C and then they pivot to B to B because it's easier for them to make money. So that was one comment I wanted to make from, from um, seeing some of the ideas this morning. We are looking for startups with exceptional teams. Uh, idea, the idea is almost a given. What, what we're looking for first and foremost is the energy within the people, and we're betting on the people. The idea, well, it needs to be a good idea, but we're betting on the, the people, and do we think that these people can execute this idea and get it off the ground? And that is our biggest, biggest uh, criteria out of anything on this list, and any VC should say the same, and they probably will. So that's the most uh, important criteria. Why? Because you might only have a prototype, you might only have one or two customers, so you need to have that energy to grow the company, but that ability to sell your idea to potential customers. You're also selling that idea to potential investors, and ultimately you're going to be selling that idea at an exit. Um, and so that ability to, to have that energy and to display that energy uh, in a professional way is very important to investors. And that would be the main thing that they're looking at is that their belief in you. Because they're betting on you uh, and your ability to execute that idea. Okay? Um, also for Amadeus, business ideas with scalability. So if you're looking to take over um, Portugal, that's great, uh, but it has, for us, it has to be more than just that. We need to be able to scale to a region, uh, and it needs to be able to work outside uh, a whole market. Of course, it starts there, of course, um, but it needs to ultimately be able to, to be a bit more of a, of a dominant player. And don't uh, confuse scalability with focus. So um, you, you need to have a very a strong focus on your idea, on, on your, your niche concept, but it, you need to be able to, to scale that uh, beyond the borders of, of your first country. It doesn't mean you need to be in more than one country when we invest, but we at least need to see that it's a business model that's not limited to the confines of uh, a certain country. Okay? Fourth, fo we foster tight relationships with our portfolio companies. We're strategic investors, so like I said, we want to ultimately um, have a commercial relationship with you. Uh, and we look to foster that. We're also quite upfront during the initial conversation of what you expect from us. And we're quite upfront about what we uh, would expect from you to also ensure that there's no uh, misalignment ex expectations. If, if, if a startup thinks we're gonna develop this technology and we want your sales force to go out there and sell it, and, and you know, then we're quick access to 195 countries and our sales force will just take that and sell it and make it their top priority, that's probably not going to happen. So we want to make sure that that, um, that the objectives are aligned and that you as a, as a, as a owner and us as a minority uh, shareholder, that, um, that we'll make sure that our, that our, that our objectives are aligned. We strongly prefer to co-invest with others, um, and uh, and uh, this obviously means the other VCs, other business angels. We will co-invest with other strategics, uh, and we have done so. But just um, maybe a a message for you guys: I think as as owners of of your companies, you need to consider whether that's the right thing to do. You might not want two different strategic investors at the table. Um, because they might have conflicting interests, and it also depends on how strong um, those strategics operate. We're pretty hands-off. Um, we like to keep it that way. We, we get involved with the startups and we help them when they need us, but we're not in there trying to dictate uh, our goals. We want to make sure that that startup remains focused and executes their plans. Uh, but it's something for you guys to think about. Other VCs might tell you, don't involve strategics or big pain in the neck, they'll screw you up. 
maybe you got to pick the right one, and 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 you got to pick them because you you need them, you want them, um, you like them. Um, so uh, so you need to consider that. But but usually the VCs will probably tell you stay away. It also depends on your uh, your stage. So we say early stage. We're not confined with seed A, B. Our sweet spot spot is probably more Series A. Um, we have done seed investing, and um, and so it just depends on the on your readiness uh, readiness as well. Okay. Our maximum ticket per company over the life cycle of that company is three million uh, euros. It's pretty doable in today's. In today's market, that means we're also kind of co-investing. So if you're raising more, you know, we just contribute up to three million. I will say one thing about the co-invest, because Diego mentioned this morning, we do like to to follow, <laughs> and a lot of them like to follow. Everyone follows. We follow for a different reason. Um, uh, we follow because it helps keep us honest. Um, if we're the lead investor, it means we set the valuation. And we also realize, as a as a fairly new investor to the block, we need to be very quick to respond. And if if as a corporate we have to get bogged down into that valuation discussion, it really slows down the process for us. And and it and in some ways the valuation it's important, but it shouldn't be where the focus of the conversation is uh, as a strategic investor. So it just helps speed up the entire process if we follow around. Uh, so the valuation uh, discussion gets completely removed from the table. It doesn't say we won't take the lead. We, we would and we, we do um, and we're looking at a few right now. But it really just helps keep the process quicker uh, and it helps keep us a bit more honest. So that's a reason. And of course I just turned it off. No, I didn't. Um, our current portfolio, uh, these two companies, Yapta, based out of the U.S., uh, they have, it's an air flight uh, guarantee uh, solution, works quite, um, quite well with corporations and TMCs. It's a great example of a company that started out trying to be a B2C website and pivoted selling their solutions to corporations and, and finally really took off once they did that. And then Catify, uh, based out of out of Spain, but growing their market almost exclusively in Latin America. It's a, let's say, an Uber a solution, a car a mobility app for the Latin market, and doing very well in Latin, where it's not regulated, <laughs> unlike the massive amount of strikes that Uber are getting uh, right now in, in Europe. So that's our portfolio, and, uh, and we have a few things brewing uh, right now, and Thank you very much, Dr.